one of the most contentious issues among futurists, as we approach the singularity, is when it will occur. How soon can we expect this? The question is how. More importantly, what does this imply for the future of humanity? Well, who better to ask than Ray Kurzweil, renowned futurist and author of the groundbreaking book, The Singularity is Near. Recently, Kurzweil has shared his thoughts on the subject, revealing that he has a new book, The Singularity is Near, set to be released in January of 2023. In his new book, Kurzweil maintains the same views he expressed in his earlier work, but with a fresh set of eyes. After all, the world has changed dramatically since he first wrote about the singularity. Smartphones, social media, and other technological advancements have become commonplace in our daily lives, making the concept of the singularity more plausible and more relevant than ever before. Despite all of the doom and gloom that we see in the news these days, Kurzweil's new book takes an optimistic approach. He argues that we are actually making progress as a species and that the indicators of human well-being are actually improving every year. With over 50 charts to back up his claims, Kurzweil shows us that the good news is actually better than the bad news. So, whether you're a skeptic or a believer, one thing is clear, the singularity is closer than we think, and it's up to us to decide what kind of future we want to create. As we navigate through the ever-changing landscape of technology, it's easy to get caught up in the negative chatter that permeates our society. But what if I told you that our perceptions of technology's impact are not entirely accurate? Renowned futurist Ray Kurzweil has been a longtime proponent of the exponential growth of technology, and he's not surprised by its rapid development. He points out that polls consistently show a negative perception of progress, despite the reality being quite positive. Poverty has fallen by 50% in the last 20 years, but most people believe it's gotten worse. However, Kurzweil believes that we're on the cusp of a technological breakthrough. He's been predicting that we'll pass the Turing test since 1999, and he thinks it'll happen by 2029. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Turing test, it's a measure of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from a human. While we're not quite there yet, Kurzweil believes that we're getting close. In fact, he thinks that by the 2030s, will begin to merge with technology. It won't just be humans versus computers anymore. We'll have the ability to connect to the cloud and amplify our intelligence. Think about your cell phone. It's not very smart without the ability to connect to the cloud, which provides most of its intelligence. Kurzweil envisions a future where we'll do the same thing with our brains, allowing us to think more deeply and process information more efficiently. We'll be a hybrid of our natural thinking, and the cloud's intelligence, and the cloud will amplify our abilities. By 2045, Kurzweil predicts that most of our thinking will be in the cloud. It's a bold prediction, but if history is any indication, Kurzweil's track record for predicting technological advancements is pretty impressive. So, what does this mean for our future? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the possibilities are endless. As Ray discussed earlier, our technological advancements have been progressing at a rapid pace, and this extends to our efforts in life extension as well. Ray explains that we are now applying AI to simulate biology, which allows us to test and find solutions much more quickly. For example, Ray highlights the incredible speed at which the Moderna vaccine was created. Through testing several billion different mRNA sequences, Researchers were able to find ones that could create a vaccine in just three days. While it did take 10 months to test on humans, the vaccine itself never changed from its original form. Looking forward, Ray predicts that we will no longer need to test on humans in the traditional sense. Instead, we will be able to test on a million simulated humans, which will yield much more accurate and efficient results. We will be able to simulate every possible antidote to any problem and test them quickly. This will revolutionize the way we approach medicine and allow us to find solutions to health issues much more rapidly than before. In essence, our ability to simulate biology with AI will enable us to go through every single problem in medicine and find solutions very quickly. The traditional method of testing on humans takes years, but with this new technology, we could test every possible solution in just a matter of days. 
This is an exciting development that is set to transform the way we approach life extension and medicine as a whole. As the globe tries to come to terms with the pandemic's catastrophic impacts, many are wondering why medical technology didn't advance fast enough to save more casualties. The vaccination had been created long before the lockdowns began, but it was only introduced subsequently. Experts believe that 2 million lives could have been spared if we had acted sooner. However, why did scientific progress in medicine progress so slowly? Due to the rapid pace at which the vaccine was created, its efficacy was questioned by some. However, as science and technology progress, so too must medical procedures and philosophies. We have no choice except to act immediately. A great many lives have been spared thanks to the vaccine, but that doesn't mean the danger is over. We need to begin modeling biological systems in order to address pressing medical issues. Even though we're just at the start of a medical revolution, I believe it will be complete by the end of this decade. The caveat is that human beings would have to actively pursue immortality. By not addressing our issues, we risk missing out on the benefits of these developments that could save lives. It's very much like the massive anti-vaccine campaign, which may have been a result of how quickly the vaccine was developed. Here's our chance, and it's up to us to take it. When asked what gives him the most hope, Ray's answer is unequivocal, the lightning-fast development of AI. Ray has been a part of the AI community since he was 12 years old, barely six years after the field was given its name at the 1956 Dartmouth Conference. And believe me when I say that progress was far slower in the past. Now, though, events are occurring on a monthly basis, as Ray puts it. It's incredible how quickly innovation in general, and AI in particular are progressing. Something that was previously insurmountable is being resolved rapidly. In addition, this quickening will lead to enormous development. We can anticipate even more remarkable developments in AI before the decade's conclusion. Ray is in the vanguard of a revolutionary era, and it's a thrilling time to be alive. Ray Kurzweil a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence, is optimistic about the future of AI and its potential to unlock unimaginable advances in technology. In a recent interview, he discussed the most promising approaches for achieving full potential of artificial general intelligence, surpassing the Turing test, and creating superintelligent machines. One key factor in achieving these goals, according to Ray, is increasing the amount of computation power available to AI systems. Currently, we are using more computation than we can provide, but as we continue to increase it, AI systems will perform better and overcome previous obstacles. Ray believes that the exponential growth of computation, which has been happening over the past few decades, will continue at an even faster pace in the future, ultimately leading to the creation of super-intelligent machines. However, simply increasing computation power is not enough. Algorithmic improvements are also necessary for AI to reach its full potential. Ray and his team are working on solving one major issue with language models, which is their struggle with inference. Inference is the process of deriving new information from existing information, and it is a crucial aspect of intelligent reasoning. Currently, language models are not very good at it, but Ray believes that they have some ideas on how to fix this issue. Another crucial aspect for achieving AGI is data collection. In order to simulate biology for different kinds of problems, we need to collect vast amounts of data and organize it in a meaningful way. Ray believes that we are making progress in this area, but there is still a long way to go. Despite these challenges, Ray is confident that we are on track to meet the Turing test by 2029, which is the benchmark for creating an AI system that is indistinguishable from a human. He has been predicting this achievement since 1999, and he believes that the exponential growth of computation and algorithmic improvements will make it possible. In terms of the most promising approaches for achieving AGI, Ray believes that a fusion of neural and traditional logic-based and symbolic-based approaches is necessary. While neural approaches have been successful in many areas, they are not very good at symbolic reasoning, which is the manipulation of abstract concepts and ideas. Traditional logic-based and symbolic-based approaches, on the other hand, are good at this type of reasoning, but they struggle with more complex tasks such as image recognition. By combining these two approaches, Ray believes that we can create a more powerful AI system that is capable of handling a wide range of tasks.
In conclusion, while there are still many challenges to overcome, Ray Kurzweil is optimistic about the future of AI and its potential to unlock unimaginable advances in technology. Through continued increases in computation power, algorithmic improvements, and data collection, we may be able to achieve AGI and create super-intelligent machines in the near future. Ray Kurzweil's response to the question about the need for a next-level breakthrough after deep learning to progress with AI to the next level reflects his optimism about the current state of AI research. He believes that the current methods of neural nets are the correct ones and that they can be amplified with new technology to get us closer to achieving AGI. While he agrees that additional ideas and algorithmic improvements are needed, he does not believe that a massive new breakthrough is required. He thinks that the kind of neural nets advanced by researchers like Jeffrey Hinton are good enough and that with some additional changes that are currently being experimented with, we can get closer to achieving AGI. For example, he cites recent work on developing massive language models like Google's Palm, which showed promising results in generating jokes. Additionally, he mentions the need for improved inference capabilities, which can be achieved by tweaking neural nets. Overall, Kurzweil is optimistic about the current trajectory of AI research and believes that we are on the right path towards achieving AGI. However, he acknowledges that there is still much work to be done in terms of collecting data, organizing it and developing new algorithms. Nonetheless, he is confident that we will continue to make rapid progress in the coming years. Ray Kurzweil stated that the epidemic has changed the focus of medical innovation. We've been employing simulated biology as a tool in the fight against COVID. By using this technology, scientists were able to generate vaccines against COVID-19 far more rapidly than they would have been able to using more conventional approaches. The anti-vax movement has been bolstered however, by the speed with which vaccinations have been developed through the use of simulated biology. Ray Kurzweil says we should advance the concept of simulated biology. The United States government has a strategy to develop new vaccinations in a matter of months, with the time frame expected to decrease to three months in the near future. Using this method, the Moderna vaccine was created in under three days. In the future, it will be far more efficient to test vaccines on a million artificial humans rather than on 100 actual individuals. According to Ray Kurzweil, collecting data for every medical issue is going to be crucial and simulated biology will be able to solve any medical condition. The ability to run simulations and rapidly arrive at solutions to medical problems depends on having access to all the relevant data. This kind of innovation is required to solve numerous medical problems that have persisted for decades. Have you ever thought about what the future holds for technology? In a recent interview, he was asked how can he predict the future, to which he humbly responded that he doesn't predict the future, he merely provides insight into the capabilities that technology can bring. But this interview wasn't just about Kurzweil's predictions. The conversation also turned to the use of large models in academia. These models are so advanced that they can write about any topic, and if the writer doesn't like the answer, they can simply ask the model to write again until they find something that suits them. And the best part is that it's virtually impossible to tell if someone has used a model to write something, because the answers are always different. Kurzweil finds this new development in academia delightful and not surprising. He believes that these models will continue to surprise us with their capabilities in the coming years. It's amazing to think that we now have access to an intelligence that was never before possible, and it's exciting to imagine what advancements will come next. The world of large models, particularly transformer models and universal models, has raised some interesting questions about the nature of innovation. Is it all about computation? Is the future of technology really just about how many nodes we can throw at a problem, and ultimately how many dollars we can spend on it? According to Ray Kurzweil, it's not that simple. While computation power is certainly important, it's not the only factor. The amount and quality of the data being used to train the models is also crucial. The first models were trained on the web, which is not always the most accurate or reliable source of information. But now, researchers are finding ways to train models on more accurate and reliable data. When it comes to solving specific problems, like creating a vaccine using mRNA sequences, collecting accurate and relevant data becomes even more important. And while neural nets are powerful tools, they are not enough on their own. 
Inference is a key issue that still needs to be addressed. This involves understanding what a statement is saying, what its implications are, and being able to do multi-step reasoning. So, while computation power is vital, there are other factors at play in the development of large models. Algorithmic issues and data quality also play important roles. And even with half a trillion parameter models, we're still not at the level of human intelligence when it comes to specific issues. The world of large models is constantly evolving, and researchers are working to address these challenges and unlock even more potential in this exciting field. According to Ray, many prosperous businesses are being established without spending millions on pricey systems, and there is still a great deal of room for creativity with only a few computers. It's true that it can be expensive to train such enormous models, but once they're ready to go, they're considerably cheaper to run. It is not monopolized by any single corporation because many firms like Google and Microsoft are making these models available to the general public. That way, more people and businesses may work together and develop new uses for the technology. Even if there may be some economic inequalities due to the costs of educating these models, Ray argues that making them available to the public can ultimately lead to more opportunities for creativity and progress. Ray brings to light the fact that throughout the ages, both the number of democracy and the number of people whose lives are governed by democracies have greatly increased. He is of the opinion that the trend toward democracy is a positive one, despite the fact that there are still participants in the world that do not adhere to democratic principles. He recognizes that there are still issues plaguing democracies and that different nations have varying degrees of democracy. Nonetheless, he sees that democracies are banding together to fight against those who oppose it. In general, he is of the opinion that technological advancements have the potential to aid in the resolution of issues that arise inside democracy, yet it is essential to maintain efforts aimed at enhancing democracy overall. Dr. Ray Kurzweil believes that in a future epoch that lies beyond the singularity, humanity will evolve into a species capable of inhabiting multiple planets. He is of the opinion that it will be when we have depleted the capacity of the planet to generate additional intelligence and computational resources owing to a lack of available materials. According to what he has said, this may not happen for at least a hundred years. After that point, it will be necessary for us to do research on other planetary systems and it is likely that we will dispatch highly intelligent beings to other worlds in order to organize their materials and turn them into Compatronium. On the other hand, the amount of time it will take for us to arrive at other planets will be heavily influenced by the question of whether or not we can travel faster than the speed of light. When compared to our ability to extend computation beyond Earth, which is something that is a long way from the singularity, Putting anything on Mars may be interest, but it will not have a substantial influence on humanity. Instead, Kurzweil believes that the singularity will be reached when we are able to do so.